Okay, so today we're gonna to show you how to turn these into wine. That's up next. Hello everyone, this is Dwayne with Edge of Nowhere Farm and we're coming to you today, it is May 2020. So those of you who watch us on a regular basis know that we've got a farm and fruit trees are one of our favorite things to grow here on the farm. Now we're on a new farm here, however, we took a large harvest off of our old farm and brought it here with us. So what I have here in front of us is I have our Primark Blackberry Harvest actually from about this time last year in 2019. Now, of course, these aren't fresh. These are frozen. And that's really what we're going to kind of focus on with this video today. So what you have here is, uh, again, frozen blackberries. So what we do is we flash freeze these and I'll see if I can find the video and link it here where we talk about flash freezing. But essentially we flash freeze these so that they aren't in a solid chunk when we freeze them. Now, of course, advantages to frozen fruit when it comes to wine. The first one would be you can take your time and decide when you want to make your wine. So in this case, we harvested these a year ago and we're starting on the wine batch today, a year later. So obviously that would be one of the big advantages to freezing your fruit. Second one would be when fruit is frozen, it actually goes through a major change. If anybody's had frozen fruit before, say you use with smoothies or something like that, and you defrost it, you'll know that it turns into mush by the time this is actually defrosted. And actually when you're making wine, that's a huge advantage. For anybody who's crushed grapes, hello, we have. That's one of our least favorite things when it comes to wine is the crushing of that fruit to extract the juice. Well, when you freeze fruit, it essentially just does that job for you. So in this case, we've got frozen fruit that by the time it's defrosted is essentially that mush that we're looking for. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna go ahead and get this into a bucket so that this can defrost overnight so you can see what it looks like when we're done. Okay, so obviously when it comes to winemaking, I will go ahead and link our series here where we talked about the entire process as far as how we make wine. So if you wanna go ahead and reference that, you can. So you'll see basically each step of what we're gonna go through. Now we didn't use frozen fruit in that, we used apples, fresh apples and apple juice. But in this case, the rest of the steps beyond what you're gonna see today are exactly the same. So all we're gonna do, you can see I've already got some blackberries in here. So all we're gonna do is dump them into a very, very large fermenting bucket. So this bucket is, I think six gallons or just over six gallons. And you can see it takes up less than half the space in here. Now, of course, this is gonna look drastically different in the morning, but we just wanna make sure that as we're going through the process of making this batch of wine, I've got plenty of room to work in here. So I think what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and wait because we need these to turn into something a little more user-friendly when it comes to making wine. So let's go ahead and flip the page and come back tomorrow morning. Okay, so here we are. It's actually the next day. So this has been in here for, oh, probably about 18 hours or so. So what I'm gonna do is kind of show you what's happened as these frozen blackberries have defrosted. So I'm gonna have Lori slide on in so you can see, wow. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking for. So I haven't touched these yet. You can see we still have whole looking berries here and you can already see all that just amazing syrup that's down there. Oh my goodness. So again, with nothing. So we haven't done anything yet. And you can see as far as mashing, I will mash these. So we do wanna mash these up a little bit. And just this metal spoon is gonna probably just about do the job. You can see, actually, yeah, they're mashing up pretty good already. So it's not gonna take a lot of work to get these mashed up, just to squeeze a little more juice out of each one of these blackberries. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get these mashed down. Once I'm done, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so just like that, we're done. We used a couple of different tools there just to make sure we had a really good mash in here. So I did use a manual potato masher and one of those little like bread cutter thingies. I don't know, Lori knows the name of that thing. Pasta cutters? Anyways, so what you wanna do is kind of slide and you'll see how this looks. So it's pretty much just your basic mash and there's some different size chunks in there. Maybe some that are a little bigger. For the most part, I don't see any full size berries in here. I just kind of see a jumbled mash. 
And that's really what we're looking for at this point. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of our ingredients into this big bucket so we can go ahead and get ready to get yeast pitched. So let's go ahead and go over the ingredients we're gonna use in order to make this blackberry wine today. Okay, so for the ingredients. Now, this is how we're gonna be, ma be making our blackberry wine. Obviously, you can adjust the ingredients a little bit to whatever your taste may be. But first thing would be, we need to make sure we're disinfecting what you're seeing behind me. So all the blackberries, there's probably some wild yeast, potentially, you know, pretty much guaranteed there's some wild yeast in there and definitely some bacteria. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get some Camden tablets. So these little guys here are gonna be used to disinfect and kill off any wild yeast and bacteria. I'm gonna be adding three gallons of water so what I'm gonna and in the end we're gonna wind up with a little over three gallons of liquid because of the syrup that's in there so I'm gonna use four Camden tablets for disinfectant next thing we're gonna be putting into the must will be a peptic enzyme so we've got all these by the way in our Amazon shop if you want to take a peek but um, so we've got a peptic enzyme that's gonna to help to increase the juice yield out of the blackberries and it's also gonna to help to clear the wine in the end so we'll have peptic enzyme next is gonna be an acid blend so we're gonna be adding some a, a blend of different acids to bring the acidity of the wine up just a bit and we are going to also be using um, a yeast nutrient so the yeast nutrient has instructions on the bag the peptic en enzyme does as well the acid blend blend doesn't but we typically use about the same ratio of acid blend to peptic enzyme so in this case with the three gallons I think we have about a teaspoon and a half of acid blend about a teaspoon and a half of peptic enzyme and then I think we have about four and a half teaspoons of the yeast nutrient I've got all that including the Camden tablets mixed into this little bowl and then of course we are going to be using yeast so now the two different yeasts that I use I like the red star yeast it's just my preference and I use two different types we generally like our wine pretty strong you'll see that as we're looking at our specific gravity today so what I'm gonna do is use a combination of premier cuvee and then a premier blanc from red star yeast these two I found work kind of differently um, both of them have a very high alcohol tolerance which is what we're looking for the um, premier cuvee is very fast and the blanc is a little slower so I find that those that combination of those two yeasts does a very very good job of getting a nice strong ferment that finishes cleanly and pretty quick especially with the warmer weather that we have inside the house this time of year now in addition to that we also are going to be adding sugar water so let's take a look at that real quick okay so we have our puree here of blackberries and this would be our sugar water so what you have here is you have three gallons of water and I like to add warm water so it's warm water the water that we have in here is filtered but it's a little warm and we went ahead and added sugar into this so into the three gallons we added about seven pounds of sugar and made sure that we had that mixed really really well that way we're not having to mix it in the must makes it a little bit easier now we may add some additional sugar to bring that alcohol content up a little bit higher but we'll test that just to see what we need as far as that's concerned okay what I'm gonna do now I'm gonna go ahead and get our ingredients mixed into here and I'm also gonna get this poured slowly <laughs> into our must so we can get that going Okay, so you can see, very, very simple. Obviously, I wanted to make sure we get away from the couch and everything else. We definitely did not want blackberry splashing onto the couch. So either way, that makes super, super easy. So if you guys wanna slide in, you'll see what this looks like. Now, obviously, there's a lot of water. I don't know yet exactly what this is gonna look like. I'm guessing it's gonna be more of like kind of a rosé. We are looking to kind of a light to medium body as far as the wine is concerned. So you can see it's, it'll definitely darken up quite a bit, uh, but right now it's fairly clear. So now what we need to do is we need to get a sample out of here. So I have a very large wine thief, and we specifically use this when we're dealing with the must, so we can get down below this top layer of the pulp from the blackberries. I have a hydrometer here. This is gonna help to get our specific gravity reading, and I have a vessel. So I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the wine out of here, get into the vessel, figure out what our specific gravity is and whether or not we need to add any more sugar to determine our final estimated alcohol content.
Okay, so that is done. So Flory wants to come in a little bit, really not much in the way of change. Now, as far as our specific gravity, we did add some more sugar. So we got it up to about 1.110 as far as specific gravity, which will wind up giving us a final alcohol content, at least an estimate of just under 15%. So a nice strong wine, that's always what we shoot for is right around 15 to 16% as far as alcohol content. Either way, this is ready to basically sit. What we're gonna do is let this sit overnight. So we're gonna give it 24 hours, come back about the same time tomorrow, and then we need to get yeast into this so it actually starts turning into wine. So we're gonna go ahead and flip the page, come back tomorrow. Okay, so here we are. It's been about 24 hours and I want to see how this looks. Shouldn't look too much different, but Flory wants to slide in. Probably not a whole lot different from yesterday. <laughs> Interesting, the colors are definitely gonna be more of like a rosé, I think, when it's done. I don't see any whole pieces of blackberries floating around in here, so that's a good sign as well. Okay, so at this point, this is ready for our yeast. So I went ahead and I mixed this. In fact, we took a video showing you how we mix this. Okay, so you can see from that, pretty straightforward as far as what you need to do. Uh, have two packs of yeast, so it's about a half a cup of water that was kind of warm, so between 95 and 100 degrees. It's been sitting in here now for right at 20 minutes. So this is ready to pour in, and this is really your next step. Just want to point out again, we're using the Premier Cuvée and the Premier Blanc. So both of those is a combination of two different types of yeast. And all you really do here is just slowly stir this in. I do like to kind of mix it around. I want to make sure I get as much yeast out of here as possible. Each one of these packets is good for up to five gallons of, wa gallons of wine and we're between four and five gallons. Just like that. Get a little bit more of that out of there. There we go. All right. And you can already smell that yeast going to work. And then I do like to give this a stir. And I think that, you know, there's a lot of different videos out there that say you just pour it in and leave it sit or you mix it in. I'm a fan of mixing it in. Not super hard because we want to make sure those guys are nice and happy in here. But that's about it. And then what I'm going to do is just leave that alone. So one thing I just want to make you make sure that you saw because we are going to show you how this yeast works this week. Uh, so it's 10 o'clock in the morning on Sunday. We may peek at this this evening and then of course we'll come back probably tomorrow evening. So I'd give it at least 24 hours to get started. We'll see what this starts to look like. Okay, so we're here. It's actually still Sunday, May 3rd, and it's about five hours later. Wanted to peek in on this just to see what we have going on so far. So if you want to slide in a little bit closer, let's take a look. By the way, we don't put an airlock on here. That's on purpose. There's a lot of CO2 that's being off-gassed here, so I want to make sure it can get out easily. And there we go. That's what I wanted to see. You can see the yeast is starting to get really active. It's forming this cap on top. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna punch down through this a little bit and see how we're doing. Oh yeah, look how thick that cap is already. And what I'm looking for is just what I'm seeing, that bubbling action. So we already have a lot of yeast activity in this wine. This is wine at this point. We've already got some alcohol that's formed in here. That's just that natural byproduct. And yeah, you can see that, that foam. And this is five hours in, guys. Now, obviously, we're, oh, probably about 78 degrees or so is the temperature we're keeping it when it's 100 degrees outside here in Arizona. So that warm temperature is really helping this yeast go. You can see already getting a good amount of CO2 released off of there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this alone come back here about the same time tomorrow. Might be a little bit later. Okay, so here we are. It's about 24 hours later. Today is May 4th, so Star Wars Day 2020. And we've got a day's worth of fermenting going on. So squeeze on in. Let's take a look and see what it looks like. Uh, a little over 24 hours in. Oh yeah, so that cap is, I can already tell it's nice and thick. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch this down. We'll see what a difference a day makes. There we go. Yeah. That's really, really good. You can see how much more foam there is that's created as I push this down. And that is the yeast making alcohol. 
So the CO2 is the byproduct. And that cap, the reason why you push the cap down is you want to make sure that plenty of air is getting down to those yeasties down there that are turning that sugar into wine or more specifically into alcohol. So it looks really good. As far as the color, uh, it's hard to tell with all this cap, but you can see probably going to be more of a rosé, so light bodied, kind of like we were expecting. But yeah, and as far as smell, yeah, it smells like a brewery <laughs> or a vineyard. It smells really good. I like that smell. But you can see it's going pretty good. It's going nice and strong. I've seen, I've seen it go stronger than this on some of our other wines, but um, overall it's doing pretty good. So we're gonna obviously still stir this each day. Um, if it looks the same, I won't come back to you guys. Um, I would imagine it probably won't change too much. Usually 24 hours in is about as strong as it typically gets. If it looks drastically different here over the next couple of days, we'll show you. If not, we'll actually be about ready to get out of primary and into the secondary, which I wanna show you guys as well. Either way, coming along really good 24 hours in. Okay, so here we are. It is Thursday, May 7th, 2020, here in the evening. And we've been stirring this on a regular basis. I'm gonna have Lori slide in so you can see what it looks like because I think we're ready to go ahead and get out of the primary fermentation vessel. Okay, so here's what we look like. So you can see, still got a little bit of a cap, but from the last time we were here, I still have foam, which means we still got plenty of fermentation going on, but the cap is much, much thinner. So that all that material is starting to float to the bottom of this bucket. So what I know now is the strongest part of fermentation is pretty much done. And generally speaking, we typically find, especially when we're nice and warm, that it only takes about four to five days before we start to have that cap starting to fall. And we're close enough that we can go ahead and get this out of the primary fermentation into the secondary. So we're gonna do that this evening with you. So a couple other things that we're gonna need. So I've got another five gallon bucket. We know that we have somewhere between four and five gallons of liquid. So I've got a five gallon bucket that I have lined with this mesh. And you can find these, I think we've got them in our Amazon shop, but you can find them anywhere where they sell winemaking supplies. So I've got that basically lining the bucket. And I also have a five gallon, uh, basically it's a, a secondary fermenter, um, but it's a, a bottler as well. So ultimately what we're gonna do is get this poured into here, strain out all the big stuff and get it poured into this container. So now I know that I've got four to five gallons and we'll talk a little bit more about that once I get it into this container but now what i need to do is go into the tub <laughs> get this poured into there and into this container so i'm going to stop talking get to work you guys can watch how we do this Okay, so like that, we're done. Now you can see we use the bathtub for a reason because it does splash a little bit no matter what we do. And you know, I've seen a lot of videos where people talk about, you know, trying to keep air out and all this other stuff. You know, we've made several batches of wine at this point, have not had an issue with doing that. I do like to wring that bag out. Not completely, there's probably still a little bit of wine in there, but I do like to wring that out just to get as much as I possibly can probably ringed out a good glass or two. So, you know, we've still got to re-rack this. We're gonna be removing the Lee's sediment that's gonna build up over the next couple of weeks. So we've got a lot of work to do there and it's still definitely going nice and strong. I can see that with the airlock. Another thing, um, headspace. So you notice there's a lot of headspace in this vessel right now. Now, we obviously will be re-racking this in a couple weeks once the primary fermentation slows down a lot more. And we'll split this up over probably into a three gallon container and then probably a portion of a one gallon jug. And the a space, the amount of head space for now is fine because what's happening is the airlock is obviously keeping air from going back into this container and the CO2 is pushing that air out and it'll basically form a layer of CO2 essentially, at least it's been how it's been described to me by a veteran winemaker who we buy supplies from, is that you'll have this layer at the bottom. So especially for the next couple of weeks while this is still going nice and strong, don't really need to worry 
worry about this excess headspace. We will be concerned with that once we rack it the next time. Either way, you can see the color, definitely looking at a rosé, so definitely a light-bodied blackberry wine. Smells amazing. You can smell that strong wine set, scent and beautiful color. Really looking forward to how this is going to look when it's finished and really excited to see, of course, how that's actually gonna taste. But I'll make sure that I link the series we did on making wine start to finish, so you see where we're gonna be going from here through the next several steps all the way through bottling. Basically doesn't change from here on out. So I'll make sure I link that for you guys, you can check that out. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel. Questions or comments, leave those in the comment section down below. Instagram and Facebook, we post content there you won't see here on the YouTube channel. And our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description. That is a free painless way to help support the channel. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support us here. So just want to thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, and if we can make wine on the edge of nowhere, so can you.